amazing Lunar Wisdom authors. Today I have with me Talisha Webster. She's also a certified moonologer, just like me. She's an embodiment teacher, a moon cycle facilitator, and the founder of Embody Moon. She blends somatic psychology and spiritual wisdom to help women relax, recharge, and find their flow, which I 100% totally agree with. Her classes and circles harness the cycles of the moon and the body as potent pathways for self-reflection, self-care, self-compassion, and self-empowerment. As a Virgo son and former corporate workaholic, Talisha knows what it's like to live life overthinking, overwhelmed and disconnected and baby don't we all. She loves to share the life-changing magic of the moon cycles as a blueprint to create ease, vitality and connection. So she incorporates her qualifications in psychology, colour therapy and trauma awareness to create multidimensional transformational experiences for her clients that are grounding, uplifting, nourishing and rejuvenating. So I hope that you guys are really going to enjoy this interview because I cannot wait to dive deeper and let you know a little bit more about Talisha. So thank you for being with us today, gorgeous girl. Can you tell us a little bit more about you? Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. It's like my debut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's great. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, yeah, so pretty much as you said, but I, I will say, I think this, I find this whole thing so funny because even a year ago, I would have been pretty terrified to do something like this and to sort of, I keep using the phrase, like come out of the spiritual closet and talk mm -hmm. about the fact that I'm, I'm pretty woo and I love the moon. <laughs> so <laughs> we've done a complete 180 there. Um, but yeah, so I, my main focus at the moment is running moon circles for women, but I feel like just calling them a moon circle kind of undersells the magic really that happens in, in those settings, because every time I'm just absolutely blown away by what happens when I get women together and we sync up with the moon cycle and we share and we go through different processes to help us kind of reconnect to our inner selves. And that's part of what is sort of the core of all of my work, really. Like on the surface of it, all these things seem not connected. Like I did a psychology degree. I've got a huge interest in trauma and the nervous system and somatics. I do embodiment, which is a practice of being in touch with the body and kind of a movement meditation. Uh, and then I run, I'm a moonologer and I run moon circles. So all these things seem pretty separate, but actually the, at the core, it's all about processes that can help us create the space to mm -hmm. tap back into what's really going on inside um, and help us become who we really want to be. So that's kind of, that's my bag. <laughs> no, I love that. I love everything about that. And as, you know, as a multi-potentialite as well, I totally understand that um, feeling like all of the things that you do are completely separate and that none of them go together. But it's funny how they do all create this pathway to exactly who we're meant to be and how we show up in our businesses and in the way that we work with our own personal energetics and flows. So I think you've brought together an amazing thing. I love that you do a lot of work also with the menstrual cycles and women really understanding their body. That is yeah. just, you were so high on my wish list. <laughs> you were like just oh. having, having that element of someone bringing in that menstrual wisdom as well um, and combining it with the moon wisdom is just total book goals, I'm telling you. Oh, oh I love that. Thank you so much. I'm going to blush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I am kind of amongst my friends, uh, the period queen, So, <laughs> which uh, I think I do touch on this in my chapter, but actually I've got to give a bit of a nod to my husband here because the whole reason that I became interested in understanding the menstrual cycle was uh, that he said to me, you know, he'd been tracking my cycle. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, um, so I can time down to a T now when we're going to have fights or when you're going to be really sensitive because <laughs> like it's literally like day 19. Um, maybe you might want to look at that because I was having at the time like pretty extreme PMS symptoms basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that sent me down a whole kind of rabbit hole of, of understanding um, the energetics of a female 
female body, both from an energy perspective, but also hormones, how that mm. affects what how we think, uh, our emotional state, our physical state, you know, it's like a massive thing. And when I learned about that, I was like, why am I in my 30s? And only learning about this now, like, no <laughs> one taught me this. I know, honestly, it's absolutely crazy how disconnected we are from our bodies, like how modern yeah. society um, just doesn't teach women this information. And I think part of that is, and I'm not knocking hormonal contraceptives because I think every woman should have choices, but hormonal contraceptives obviously disconnect us from our own natural hormonal rhythms. And when we yeah. start doing that as teenagers, before we actually understand our bodies at all, and we're still going through massive hormonal flux as well, we haven't actually settled into a natural rhythm yet, totally. that we never really develop that connection with ourselves. And I, like you, was in my mid thirties. I mean, Having said that, I was I was tracking my cycles for fertility when I got pregnant with both of my kids. So that was in my mid-20s. But then years later, so about eight years ago now, I was I needed, I was going through testing for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And my GP was like, Well, you've got to take out your hormonal implant because you can't do yeah. hormone testing when you're on hormones. <laughs> and I was like, Well, it's due for renewal anyway. I'm totally happy to come off it. Um, and honestly, I've never looked back like the connection that I regained with my body. And even like you said about your husband, noticed these things like my husband noticed things as well. And like we did have it did facilitate some discussions about different noticing things at different times through yeah. the cycle. And because I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, like my cycle is not 28 days. So it's yeah. not just as simple as like every day 19, but it was, you know, looking at what the symptoms and everything were. So I'm a huge fan of tracking. Um, obviously these days I don't track for pregnancy or like for fertility signs because we've moved past that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um you know like he's sorted that out so yeah. I, don't, I don't have to worry about that but um what is important though I still track every month and I yeah. still notice things and I can look at where I'm at in my cycle and be like oh this is why I'm I feel like crying today or this is yeah. where this is why I'm really angry like every time I get a DM I'm like oh my god <laughs> what now um yes. but I also love the contrast having started like working more deeply with the moon cycles how the two interplay like where the moon cycle is at and where my yeah. cycle is at and how that creates clashes or harmonies um yeah. so I'm really excited to have you on board because I I love the discussions you've been facilitating also in the lunar wisdom community like oh, we yeah. have, you know <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, just for everybody watching, we were having conversations about our menstrual cycles and where we were at with the moon phases. And yeah. these are the conversations that I think we need to be normalizing as women. Like every woman needs to know these things about her body and we need to talk about it more. So, 100%. Uh, you know, like I said, I was so angry that I didn't know these things. And I just think, you know, if we want to talk about reconnecting to the divine feminine, for me, if you're born into the body of a female, one of the absolute best ways that you can reconnect with the feminine is to reconnect to the body because mm. that template that we have of our cycle, and like you said, it doesn't matter that yours isn't 28 days. There's actually a lot of variation in what's considered a normal length cycle anyway. But that pattern, which is exactly what's mirrored with the moon, of starting in the lower energetic state, at menstruation or new moon waxing where the energy builds up to the full moon or ovulation and then waning reducing back down you know energy changing mm -hmm. and reducing back down to menstruation or back to new moon um you know I think I just can't understand why we don't know more about that and as soon as that <laughs> I found out about that I've been able to leverage that in my own life just to make everything so much easier like I know if I'm going to be in my premenstrual phase, and especially if it's the premenstrual phase and a waning moon cycle, I'm probably going to be a bit tired. And maybe that's not the time to completely stack my social calendar with, mm. you know, <laughs> things after thing after thing. And similarly, if I'm, 
if if I'm ovulating and especially if it's synced up with the full moon as well I'm just going to be like yes to life you know (laughs) throw everything at me Um, you you know it's that I just love it exactly but that that is what's so freaking amazing about it is that it can be so good for your business because you're like well next week is not going to be a really good time to be pushing like pushing podcast episodes yes. or interviews or you know batching video content because yeah. I'm just going to be like uh uh-uh, no mm-hmm. today's not the day whereas when you're like you're saying in that ovulatory phase you're like yep let's harness this go and batch yeah. all of this stuff and make it happen so that next week when I'm really not feeling it I can still be showing up in my business <laughs> so um we have our one of our lovely co-authors Ruth who um, she's actually been inspired by these conversations that we've been having in the author group. And I know she's been talking about it with her daughters. So I love that she's come to share that with us. Um, and then we also have Lindsay tuning in. So lovely to have you with us, Lindsay. And so, Talisha, I would really love to have you talk a little bit more about what inspired you to say yes to the Lunar Wisdom Project and why why this book and why now? I think we might have just lost Talisha for a second, but I'm sure she will be back shortly. So while we are waiting for her to pop back in. I'm just going to let everybody know that our Lunar Wisdom book launch will be happening on in three weeks time, actually three weeks tomorrow on Tuesday, the 25th of October on the new moon eclipse in Scorpio. So if you are really excited about this book as much as we are, we would love to have you let one of us know. You can either drop a comment here or if you are friends with one of our authors, please do let them know you would love to join their launch list and be notified as soon as the book comes out. It will be released on Kindle first before paperback. Um, The paperback will follow closer to Christmas time. And the um, the Kindle copy will be available between the 25th and the 31st of October for 99 cents on Amazon. So we would love you to support us on launch day on the 25th, um, but it will be available at a reduced price for a very limited time only, and then the price will be increasing. So if you would love to learn a little bit more about Lunar Wisdom, if you would like to learn a little bit more about the menstrual cycles, if you would like to learn about any of the things that any of our other authors have shared along the way through any of the other interviews, please do get in touch with your favorite author and let them know that you would love to be notified with them or by them for them. And I'm pleased to say that Talisha has come back and joined us again. So I'm just going to let her Hello. back into the studio. Hey, gorgeous. I'm so sorry. I completely lost internet at our house. <laughs> sorry. I'm not tethered to my phone. Um, I don't know where, okay. how much people heard or where I dropped out. So <laughs> We pretty much got to the part where I was just about to ask you what it was that inspired you to say yes to Lena Wisdom, why this book and why now? Okay, so <laughs> I love telling this story because it's just such like such an example of, you know, synchronicity and the universe presenting you things at the perfect right time. Um, so I was on your email list, Tracy, but I have to say, I don't really remember when I got on your email list. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure there would, you know, I love being on your list, but I was thinking, oh, I hadn't noticed any emails from you kind of regularly. And then I just I'm so like bad. Over to- <laughs> you don't get spammed when you're on my email list, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no. But you know what I mean? It was sort of like I'd obviously signed up at some point, but your emails, I mean, because I get so many anyway, half the time I get to like a thousand emails in my Gmail and just delete them all because I can't keep up. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I hadn't noticed them recently. And I'd just come back from holiday and I'd done all this lovely like visioning around, okay, what's the message that I want to offer the world and how do all these pieces of what I do kind of connect together. 
And I opened my phone one morning and your email was just like, bam, straight there saying, uh, looking for authors for Lunar Wisdom. And before I even read what, you know, your brief for the book, I just had that like immediate full body, yes, that's the thing that I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be in that book, um, which I never used to be able to hear hear those messages from my body or my intuition but that's part of what I love about doing these practices like moon work menstrual cycle work embodiment because it allows you to hear those messages when they come up uh so I got the full body yes and then I immediately went oh but you know I'm only just kind of restarting my business and is it too soon and I thought nope sod it I'm gonna just put the application in and see what happens um and then we chatted and you said, come on board. And I was like, yay, hooray. So yeah, basically I said yes, because as soon as I saw the title and then when I read your brief, I just thought I absolutely want to be part of this message. I want to be part of the movement of women who are bringing these ancient practices back to the forefront. Um, and I think it's fabulous because I've certainly noticed in the past few years that there's been a huge sudden resurgence in these topics like out of nowhere, you know, suddenly, you know, Stylist Magazine is running stuff on the moon and we've got people on morning television here, like Kirsty Gallagher on morning TV in the UK talking about her work with the moon and it's like suddenly all come to the forefront. Uh, and these practices have just changed my life, you know, so I thought it feels not, um, it feels selfish almost not to share something that I think could help other women that's been such a life-changing practice for me and something that's easy but also fun you know like I think a lot of self-care practices just to me anyway feel like a real grind you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. just something that I have to force myself to make time to do but working with the moon working with my cycle working with my body I I never feel like that's a burden I always look forward to it it's something that just yeah felt like a beautiful divine practice and you know what could be more feminine than that so that's why I yeah, said yeah I love that I love that so much especially what you're saying about so many self-care practices feel like a grind like you feel like you really have to push to do like to schedule those things yeah and I think part of it is probably because when we're disconnected from our cycles and we're trying to do the wrong things at the wrong time because we think that we're supposed to be doing them yeah. and when we are connecting with our bodies and with our energetic needs and our ease and flow working with the menstrual and moon cycles really allows us to just follow what it is that we're being intuitively led to like whether we need to be quiet whether we need to slow down whether we need to take that time to look inward and reflect and journal and just do the unpacking of the things yeah. or whether it's more of an active self-care thing where we're like okay I need to go and do things that are going to nourish my body and you know inspire my mind and really just push me out of my comfort zone because I'm ready to grow and to flourish and all of yes. those things but it's because we're being intuitively and divinely led where we're meant to be going because we are really stepping into that energetic flow and I think it just it does it changes your life working with the moon absolutely changed my life and it's like you were saying it's selfish of us to not share that with other women <coughs> and let them know and understand how they don't have to feel burnt out they don't have to feel like they're stuck in the grind and yeah. that <laughs> life doesn't have to be that way life can feel freaking easy if we're willing to let it in and it does and I don't mean like we're going to make like 10k in 10 minutes kind of yes. like abundance and ease I'm talking about like actual within yourself and within yes. your soul yeah, <laughs> yeah I 100% agree and I think something that was really lovely that happened recently so I had a bit of a break from running circles while I was finishing off um, some of my other certifications and then I restarted them recently and all my regulars were saying oh my god I'm so glad that we're running these that you're running these again because we've tried to find other things you know that kind of replace this work um, but it is quite unique and special you know they all comment on how 
you know, yeah, how life changing it's been for them to have those reminders, even if it is once every two weeks, you know, at the Mm -hmm. new moon and the full moon, to give yourself permission to stop and slow down and check in and say, well, what is it that I need right now? You know, where am I at in my cycle? What's my internal energy like? And what's the moon doing? Because I always say that those two things are like your internal emotional weather, that's your cycle. Mm -hmm. And the moon is like the external energetic weather. So Mm -hmm. if you think about how we plan our day to day life, well, especially in London, where the weather is crazy, you would never like (laughs) get even get dressed for the day without looking up, okay, is it cold? Is it going to be raining? Is it going to be sunny? You know, (laughs) what what do I need to wear? Well, I was planning a picnic today, but it's going to rain. So maybe I won't do that. Maybe we'll change our plans. And I think that that's that same sort of thing, imagining the moon's energetics as an energetic weather and the menstrual cycle as your own emotional weather just gives you more data, more options to know, okay, you know, if I'm in my menstrual phase, I'm probably going to be tired. So (laughs) let's tap into that. And it just makes everything feel so much easier, you know. And like you said, it doesn't mean we're never going to have any negative things happen or we're never going to have tricky emotions but it's just a way for us to be able to predict those things make space for them and acknowledge and accept them because fighting against you know if you're knackered and then you try and do a crossfit class it's not going to go well is it (laughs) no but it's also like what you're just saying about if once we recognize another conversation that's come up in the author group before and I've talked about it separately is the quarter moons Yes. And how there are always this time when there are energetic clashes. And yes. for me and for the, a lot of the clients that I work with, it often tends to be the first quarter moon is the external clashes. It's like when you end up having a run in with, you know, your partner, your boss, your kids, you know, you might get an unexpected bill in the mail, you have it, you know, like an accident or like all of the things that happen seem yeah. to happen around the first quarter moon. Whereas the third quarter moon seems to be more of those internal clashes. It's the who am I to be doing this? You know, what's the point? I don't have what it takes. It's like all of the imposter syndrome and everything seems to show up in the third quarter moon which, you know, is very waxing, waning cycle aligned. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because once you are synchronizing with the moon cycles and you have those clashes, like one, I know one of the other authors has commented on this and I've experienced this myself as well, where she's like, oh, my God, my husband and I got into it. And she's like, and then I looked out the window and it's the fucking first quarter moon. Yeah. <laughs> but it was then that whole, oh, Okay, that's okay. fine. Yeah. I can release that because it's not actually just that we're having this fight and it's going to shatter my world because, you know, everything's going wrong. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. No problems. Yeah. Ah, deep breath. Yeah. Breathe. This is going to be over in a day or two. <laughs> Keep going. It's so true. And I'm like, that even happened with me the other week, right? Where I was like in one of our calls freaking out about my chapter and you were like, it's quarter moon remember and I was like oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> let's just wait a few days that'll be fine <laughs> yeah um and it, it you know it's it there's something so reassuring about it because it is that whole remembering that all of these phases will pass yes right? that we're not going to be stuck in the imposter syndrome together or we're not going to be stuck in the weeds you know arguing for forever that things are going to smooth out again or we're going to feel good again the sun's going to come out again and shine again all of those things yeah. um yeah. yeah i think that's such an important message of any cyclical work and i think there's sort of two parts to that because i spend a lot of my life avoiding those sort of lower energy what we might perceive as more negative states like like the premenstrual stage you know what we tend to be a bit more strong men we can be a bit more cranky we can be critical just as like what happens with the waning side of the moon right Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of us also try to cling on to what we think are the positive states you know Mm -hmm. the fun high energy waxing part of our cycle and 
you know, I, I certainly, before I found this work, I could feel that shift happening energetically where I would be shifting out of my kind of pre-ovulatory and ovulatory and then going into that premenstrual phase. And I, I would have this response to my body like, no, no, <laughs> you know, I want to clean, I want to stay here. Um, but nothing in nature does that. You know, it's not, mm. it's not spring and summer all year round. Flowers don't bloom all year round. Like those, those lower energy states the waning part of that cycle, our autumn and winter phases are just as important for all animals, all nature, <laughs> harmony on earth, basically. So when I kind of like got my head around this cyclical thing, it made me just so much more accepting. And I was able to be so much more compassionate as well towards myself. So when I was feeling a bit more tired or a little bit more withdrawn or not feeling like socializing or, you know, having those internal um, criticisms come up for myself I was just like okay this is normal and natural and makes sense for where I am in my cycle or what the moon is doing rather than beating myself up for, you know oh last week I was like really happy and now I'm you know feeling a bit tired um so that's what I mean I just feel like it's such important information for everybody to know and yes I, my work I mostly speak to women but I am raising a son so you know I do think that men need to understand as well because you know most men have got some women in their life even if that's their own mum you know <laughs> so, yeah and it's, I've got a son as well he's nearly 17 and I have a 14 year old daughter and it's it is one of those things that I think we have been so conditioned to shield men from because yeah. it's well, it's so taboo, like we don't talk about it because it's disgusting or it's too much information or we should be ashamed of it. And like all of the things that are actually so wrong about this whole process and that do keep us disconnected from exactly who we are and everything about ourselves. But one of the best things I think about knowing this stuff and allowing the men in our lives to know and understand it is that it actually facilitates a much deeper connection and intimacy because there's it removes a lot of the boundaries and barriers to understanding why we are behaving the way that we are or yeah. what what our <laughs> emotional needs are and it's like well instead of just being oh my god she's so freaking clingy it's like okay she's like she's in this part where she just really needs to be nurtured right yeah. or like oh my god she just doesn't even want to be near me she's just like back the fuck up buddy yeah. <laughs> like, um, it's like okay yeah that's fine just going to give her a little bit of space this isn't about me yeah it's, <laughs> it's true right it gives you like a common language and it like to understand what is ultimately a shared experience um and I find that especially on my circles as well, is that everybody comes in thinking that they've got some unique thing happening for them. And obviously everybody does have different things happening in their life. But what always ends up happening by the end of the circle is everyone goes, oh, my God, I've been feeling exactly the same. <laughs> you know, and I'm mm -hmm. like, well, of course you have, because you've all been affected by the moon. You know, um, it's powerful enough to create you know, the waves. So, and our bodies are 70% water. Of course, it's going to affect us. And you're completely right. I love that, like my son who's six, you know, he understands, okay, mommy's in her winter time. So she's going to be a bit tired and don't jump all over her and she might need a bit of space. And that that's because I've been prepping him since he was, you know, two <laughs> to understand mm. that. And I think, cool, that can be my contribution to the the world is that I can uh, when he's a you know grown-up man who hopefully won't be too ashamed or embarrassed or disgusted by these topics and you know mm -hmm. will understand because of course like I said you, all men have some women in their life and this is something that affects all women so why wouldn't why should it be taboo what you know we should just understand that to make everybody's life so much easier um, um. yeah <laughs> I totally agree and this is the thing you know there's that saying hurt people hurt people yeah and the thing is that women have been hurt in so many ways like disconnected and made to feel ashamed and whatever that we perpetuate these negative cycles by shielding and hiding these things which then yeah. facilitate men when they're grown from again 
feeling the same way and oppressing our connection with the divine. And it just like it's the more that we are reconnecting with the divine feminine and the more that we are breaking these generational cycles of taboo and the more that women are reconnecting with each other and recognizing that it's not just these individual things that we're alone coming back and creating community coming back and finding support coming back and recognizing that these are perfectly natural parts of our womanhood and our history and just everything about it not only makes us like when we're more compassionate with ourselves as you said like we can be more compassionate with others but we also teach others to respect us more because we're respecting ourselves yes 100 percent. yeah if we can't give ourselves what we need then how can we expect anybody else to do that Mm -hmm. um and half the time there's like a step before that if we don't even know what we need because a lot of the time we just know we don't feel good, right? Or we're, mm-hmm. we're not happy or whatever, but we can't we can't put our hand on why. Like, you know, on the surface, maybe we've got all the things that society told us that we should have to be happy. You know, mm-hmm. we've got a job, we've got a family, we've got, you know, whatever. And we're still not feeling good or we're feeling overwhelmed or burnt out or just disconnected. So if we've got to be the ones to take control or take back the responsibility and the power of understanding our own needs putting ourselves first with those needs and then as you said that the natural side effect of that is that we can communicate those needs better to other people and other people will respect those needs because they can see that we're you know walking our talk um so yeah I think it's it's such such an important part um you know yeah all the practices that that I share are really about that it's about figuring out like what the heck is it that I even want <laughs> you know or what's yeah. going on in my life in my body <laughs> you know, which sounds like such a basic question but you know, obviously isn't you know it can be quite an existential um thing for a lot of women and I love what you said about community as well because if you think back historically you know we wouldn't have really lived the way that we live right now like we would have lived a lot more tight knit communities women particularly would have had kind of multi-generational group Mm. where we would share responsibilities and you know transfer knowledge and help the child rearing and now we're not living like that we're living very disconnected often apart from our families our friends move all over the world you know we live most people primarily in cities so we're not necessarily even that connected to nature a lot of the time so it's quite a lonely isolating not normal experience for humans really um, and that's part of what I love about women's circles is that if it does, as soon as you come into the space, you feel, you feel like, oh, oh, this is what it's supposed to be like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this, it's that feeling of coming home. Feel. Sorry. <laughs> it's that feeling of coming home. hundred percent. Yeah. And it's really hard to explain that to people until they've just tried it out. And then pretty much everybody says, oh, wow. You know, that really did feel different. It felt different to just catching up with my friends at the pub or you know whatever which that's fun too <laughs> don't get me wrong I, don't, I still enjoy that but it absolutely does feel like coming home coming home to how we're supposed to be uh how women are you know can how easy it can be how supportive it can be for women to relate together in that way and coming home to ourselves ultimately that's that's mm. you know part of my message all about coming home to yourself coming home to ourselves I love that. And speaking about your message, so can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek about what kind of, what story you're excited to share in your chapter? You don't have to give us all the details, but just enough to whet the appetite. (laughs) Okay, let me think about it because otherwise I'm just going to end up sharing the whole thing because I'm such a (laughs) chatterbox. Yeah, I am. I'm really, actually, if I'm being, you know, 100% honest, I am equal parts excited and equal parts a little bit scared about sharing this because you know as I'm sure you've mentioned on some of the um interviews with the other authors a huge part of the book is sharing our own personal story with how we started working with the moon right what does it mean what does lunar wisdom mean to us and what does reconnecting to the divine feminine mean to us so actually I have found telling my story 
um, much harder than I thought that I would, but also hugely healing and liberating as well. So I'm excited to get it out into the world now. And a huge part of what I'm sharing is about sort of coming out of the spiritual closet. It's my story of how these practices kind of came across, you know, my awareness, where I was at in my life, which wasn't, I wasn't in a great place. You know, I was a new mum. I had a lot going on with trying to make that adjustment, um, juggle parenting and working and health issues and all sorts of stuff. And then over time, these practices came into my awareness, working with the moon, working with my cycle, connecting with other women, that experience of being held in a community. And it's, yeah, it's my story really of how just softening into those practices and allowing that wisdom to really kind of infuse back into my awareness um, totally changed my life. And, you know, if you had said to me five years ago, you're going to be in a book about the moon and you're going to run moon circles and talk about all this stuff, I would have laughed at you because I would have said, no way. There's no way that I would ever be confident enough to do that. You know, I just just would not have believed it. So these practices have totally transformed my life. Like I feel like my life is so much more aligned now. I feel like I've grown so much more into who I came here to be. And um, that's part of what I'm going to be be sharing. And then I, in my spell book section, I'll have some juicy practices for women who would like to run their own circle, you know, because it doesn't have to be a sort of formal thing. You can just get together with some friends and tap into, you know, the, the format of uh, connecting with the moon and connecting with other women. And that can be really just divine supportive practice. So that's what I'll be, what I'll be sharing. Absolutely. I love that. I think when women come together, like a circle is formed when there's one or more, like two or more women together yeah. in a circle. But I also think that we can create some of those practices. Like if you don't have somebody that you can practice those things with, you can also do it on your own as well and yeah. like adapt it to just your own personal connection. But the internet has really changed things up. I mean, even online moon circles really can create a tidal wave of change and connection you know that um I guess that gr energetic gridding across the globe yes. is yep. so incredibly powerful as well yeah and that's true I mean most of my circles are online at the moment just because I found a lot of these things during COVID actually. So there were, there was no real option to do them in person or, you know, things that the rules were changing all the time in the UK. So it was easier to just stick online, but actually, you know, in, in person circles are beautiful as well, but you do get some benefits of doing them online, which is you get to be in the comfort of your own home mm -hmm. and for our nervous systems, actually that's really supportive because that's where we feel safe anyway and there's a whole practice um, that I learned from one of my embodiment teachers, actually, where the ritual of practicing anything, whether it's yoga, meditation, a moon ritual, whatever, in the same space again and again and again, actually makes your nervous system relax. So it means over time you can drop into practice quicker because you're creating mm. it's almost like you're conditioning your body and your nervous system. Oh, okay, we're in this space now and we're doing this thing. And so it knows what to expect. And that's just, it's a beautiful thing because then it means that you, you're not having to work against any internal resistance. You don't have to spend so much time just trying to, you know, forget about the day or get rid of any stress you've got that you're carrying. You just, you know, that ritual, regularity mm -hmm. of it being every two weeks for a start, but also in the same place in your own home actually gives you some extra juicy benefits of being able to drop in uh, and as I said also it means that I can have people from all over like rather than it being just in London I've got mostly women all over the UK at the moment um, but I'm trying to get some of my Aussie friends and family to come as well <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah I love it the magic of the internet it's um, you know it's it's a beautiful thing amazing well, thank you so much for being with us today, Talisha. This has been such a joyful conversation. I never get tired of talking about all of these things with not only with my beautiful Lunar Wisdom authors, yeah. but just with women in general. And I have dropped some of your links in the show notes. 
But if you would like to tell people how they can reach you or contact you or get in touch if they'd like to find out more about your moon circles or any of your menstrual work or anything like that, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, 100%. Uh, So the easiest place to get in touch with me is either via Instagram or my website. So on Instagram, I am at Embodymoon. And my website is www.embodymoon.com. I have circles every two weeks up until December at the moment. And I will be releasing some extra juicy things as book bonuses too. So yeah, (laughs) come and get on the list if you want uh, want some of those because they're going to be very personal bonuses at a very crazy price, (laughs) crazy good price. Um, so yeah, I would love to have, uh, we definitely always got, I've got space for women to join my circles and I'd absolutely love to have anybody who's feeling called come and circle with me. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. Talisha's actually going to be running a circle for us. Yeah. (laughs) Um, just before our book launches. So if you would like to be a part of that circle where the energy is going to be so incredibly amazing because it will be new moon energy, it will be setting intentions it will be new moon in scorpio eclipse energy so it's going to be like cosmic fertilizer yeah (laughs) and if you want to like set some powerful intentions for the month the season the year ahead this is definitely one circle you are not going to miss so make sure that you hit talisha up and find out all about how you can be with us in that space and really getting your whole year ahead planned out energetically and just enjoying the sense of community because we're all going to be there and we are all going to just be really leaning into this divine feminine ease and flow. So love it. So excited. (laughs) me too so thank you so much Talisha it has been absolutely amazing if anybody would like to get in touch with Talisha please do make sure that you follow her on social media and we look forward to you supporting us in our book launch in three weeks time yay thank you so much for having me Tracy (laughs) thanks gorgeous (laughs) bye